Hello and welcome to this Australian Biocommons webinar on managing hands-on data analysis training with Galaxy. My name is Melissa Burke, I'm the Australian Biocommons Training and Communications Officer and I'll be your host for this webinar. This webinar is part of a series in which we share useful information about the latest digital techniques, data and tools that are available to the Australian and life sciences community. Each month we hear from local and international experts who present on a bioinformatics topic that we hope will help you to achieve your best environmental, agricultural or medical research. You can keep up to, up to date with the latest news and events from Australian Biocommons through the channels listed on your screen. Before we begin, we'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands on which we meet today. Today, our team is joining you from the lands of the Turrbal and Yagara people in Brisbane and the Wurundjeri people in Melbourne. We pay our respects to their ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country, and we recognise their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. Joining us today is Dr Gareth Price, the Project Lead for Galaxy Australia, a fully subsidised Australian biocommons service for computational biological research. We hear from Gareth about how Galaxy Australia is supporting bioinformatics training. Also joining us today uh, is Dr. Saskia Hilterman, who is a researcher at the Erasmus Medical Centre. She is also a co-founder and co-lead of multiple Galaxy training network initiatives and frameworks, and you're going to hear about some of those today as well. Welcome to the webinar, Gareth and Saskia. I'll now hand over to you for the presentation. Thank you, Melissa. Um, I will just do the obligatory screen share and we'll jump in. So welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk about uh, hands-on data training and analysis with Galaxy. Uh, I'll only be speaking for a few minutes and I will pass over to Sastra and Elena after that. So uh, Galaxy Australia, for those just very quick orientation, as Melissa said, it's a fully subsidized uh, national service. It is one of a collective of galaxies operated around the world. Uh, for ourselves here in Australia, uh, it's underpinned by a lot of resources I'll show in the next slide or two. We do know uh, from contact with our users that whilst uh, research on Galaxy and data analysis is a very important part of our service, training researchers, either self-driven training or, or hosted training or guided training is, is an important part of what we do on Galaxy Australia. So just setting that context for how we use it in, in Australia, then we'll, uh, as I said, I'm going to pass over to the other speakers to describe the training network and its infrastructure. So Galaxy is accessed as a web portal predominantly. But what I wanted to highlight on this slide is that actually Galaxy itself interacts with a lot of other services. So we interact with Zenodo, a repository for files and data, uh, talks, et cetera, and one place to host material for the training network. We have in the middle panel there uh, on Galaxy Australia, we have a shared data section and we host uh, all the requisite files for the Galaxy training network in that shared data folder. And on the right hand side of the screen, uh, workflows can be accessed. Uh, you'll hear later about accessing workflows in the training network. This is showing that workflows can also be accessed at other places like Workflow Hub. So Galaxy can help bring in and aggregate all that information you need to learn a, a new analysis modality. And down the bottom, I've highlighted uh, all our infrastructure and funding partners, but in particular to really emphasize that behind that web portal in Galaxy is a large amount of nationally distributed compute uh, to allow you to analyze small quick genomes uh, up to massive pan genomics, long read sequence, proteomics, metabolomics, your choice. We really do have the power in our service to handle any of your analysis needs. We do, uh, as I said, just quickly uh, know that people use Galaxy training. So I thought I would put up some metrics and it's really just a snapshot of training that has occurred on our service uh, over the last couple of years. The training has been going on beyond that. This is just a snapshot of the last few years when it's really nice to see from my point of view that 
multiple uh, national services like the Australian Biocommons and, and QCIF, uh, Queensland facility for supporting all the unis in Queensland and individual uh, hospitals, universities, uh, TAFEs are using Galaxy to train on. So that's just to showcase some of those uh, institutes that I pulled out quickly. And then some of the numbers for the 21-22 financial year and the financial year that's just finished, showing that particularly during COVID times we're all at home, but just how critically important the combination of Zoom for online training, Galaxy for doing the training and training infrastructure as a service to helping monitor and distribute that training was to continuing deliver upskilling to Australian researchers. And within my final slide before I hand over, um, I guess I haven't said it clearly enough, the Galaxy Training Network is a very critical part of how we deliver our service to Australia. And one of our points of pride in that is that a number of members of the Galaxy Australia team, past and present, contribute to the Galaxy Training Network. So Cameron, Simon, Anna, Nguyen, and Catherine in particular. So. Uh, yeah, we do like to think that we give back in some humble way, but we certainly benefit greatly from the GTN and TS. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Saskia to give the rest of the presentation. Okay, thank you. So today I will talk a little bit about um, steps we've taken uh, in order to support educators who want to teach using the Galaxy platform. Um, unfortunately, Helena wasn't feeling well today, but uh, you're welcome to reach out to both of us if you want further discussions after this webinar. Um, so just very quickly for people who may be new to Galaxy. So Galaxy uh, provides a user-friendly interface to uh, command line bioinformatics tools, data analysis tools, really trying to make this simpler to, uh, to, to use for uh, non informaticians for researchers, for clinicians, for example. Um, and so uh, when you use Galaxy, all you need is a browser. You don't have to install anything on your computer. You don't have to worry if you have uh, enough RAM, enough memory, things like that. You just point your browser to Galaxy and you get access to thousands of um, informatics tools. Um, you can build your own workflows. You can share what you do with others. Um, and best of all, it's all free. Um, so if you would like to try Galaxy, um, there are three main servers. We have a uh, server in the US, one in Europe, and one in Australia. These are very similar in terms of the, um, the, the power behind them, the number of tools they, uh, they offer. So usually taking the one nearest to you is the best option. Um, and in addition, there are uh, also many other smaller, often domain-specific Galaxy available. Uh, I put a link in there to find them. So some are really, like, if you really want to do single cell, for example, they have a lot of tools, but uh, no other tools. But there are many places where you can try Galaxy for free. Um, and because Galaxy uh, aims to have a simplified interface, it's also very suitable for teaching. Um, so you can teach bioinformatics um, without also having to teach, uh, say, the command line at the same time. So it's easier for students, but it's also easier for teachers because you don't have to do the setup. Uh, you don't have to install the tools, get VMs ready for everybody, all of that. Um, and you can really focus on the bioinformatics uh, concepts, not the intricacies of the command line or uh, R or Python. Um, so yeah, you're teaching, uh, you're not teaching how to use Galaxy, but you're teaching bioinformatics with Galaxy. Um, and yeah, there are lots more advantages that make this uh, very suitable for teaching. Um, yeah, you can focus on science, not technical details. Uh, we have a lot of uh, high quality tutorials that you can use as a teacher for your lessons. Um, Galaxy itself also offers, um, besides all the tools it offers, it also has visualizations to um, show the results. You can build workflows, you can share data with students and have it share uh, their work back with you to check. Uh, we've been working hard to enable remote teaching uh, using TS, which I will talk about more later on. Um, 
You can even combine Galaxy with programming environments such as Jupyter for Python or RStudio right within Galaxy also with you know, uh, additional setup. Um, like Eric already mentioned, you can have all the input data sets required for um, the tutorials are already uh, available on Galaxy, so there's no need for students to upload anything or if they have bad Wi-Fi connections uh, that you have to worry about. Um, there are also interactive tools such as genome browsers and other visualization tools that can be run in Galaxy. And best of all, there's a very large community of people who use Galaxy uh, for teaching that you can discuss with that can help you um, if you want to use this. Uh, so here's some of the things we'll talk about in this webinar. So we offer uh, materials, uh, teaching materials that we maintain as a community that are free for anybody to use. So there's less preparation for you. Um, these come also with FAQ. So if there are some common questions, we get new students. Um, we also uh, include them in the tutorials. You can use those to prepare or um, point your students to them. Um, we have written tutorials, but we also have video tutorials for um, some of these um, lessons. Uh, some of them are automated for slides, some of them are human recorded. Um, we try to integrate Galaxy as much as we can with this um, training uh, repository so that, uh, to make it even easier to, to teach with Galaxy. And also on the compute side, uh, we have TIAS, Training Infrastructure as a Service to provide you with uh, all the compute resources you may need behind um, your course. Okay, so first, uh, the Galaxy Training Network. Um, so a short history. So um, we used to, uh, before we started this project, a lot of us were teaching with Galaxy. We were just not talking to each other. So all of us would have a uh, RNA-seq tutorial using Galaxy uh, somewhere in a Word document on our computer. We were all repeating the same work again and again, um, which wasn't good and it was a lot of work for us every time we needed to teach. But then in 2016, Virginie uh, Spatu from the University of Freiburg uh, started this project to sort of, okay, let's communicate, let's share these resources so that we can use each other's materials, we can uh, keep them up to date together because of course the tools change quickly, the field changes quickly. Uh, and yet I uh, immediately thought this was a good idea. So we set this up uh, to really collect all these tutorials for people to learn with Galaxy. Uh, we wrote a paper uh, at some point, Helena also joined. She really helped us to professionalize the infrastructure around this. Um, and after 2018, we really started to focus on, okay, let's not just help uh, students and learners to learn Galaxy with this, but let's also support teachers. Like, what can we do to make this now uh, easy to use in a training course, in your master curriculum, uh, whatever? Uh, so, we really started to focus on that. Then, of course, the pandemic happened, and we really also started thinking, okay, okay what, what do we need to, to provide to make this also suitable for online training? Uh, and we recently um, have another paper. Per published so you can uh, read all about that if you want. Uh, and of course, this is way bigger than the three of us. We sort of lead it, but um, we have over 300 and, uh, contributors from the community who have added here, who have um, added tutorials or maybe helped with the infrastructure or just updated tutorials. Um, so this is really a community effort uh, for the community by the community. Um, so now today we have um, over 350 tutorials by almost, uh, yeah, by over 300 uh, contributors, 37 different topics. We have both scientific topics, a uh, very wide range of scientific topics, as well as technical topics. So uh, this started out really focused on bioinformatics, but we've now also branched out. We have e uh, ecology topic, we have a climate uh, topic. So it's really broadened. Um, and we aim to have all these tutorials be um, suitable for self-study as well as for use in the classroom. Um, and anybody is free to contribute their tutorials here. Um, so this is what it looks like. If you go to training.galaxyproject.org, you will find here all these tutorials that we've uh, been talking about. Uh, organized into topics ready for you to use or to 
point your users to. Um, yeah, here's the link to the um, to the latest publication, but this is really uh, a community effort. So just, um, I will walk you through the structure of one of these tutorials. So we tried to structure these. You can think of these as like um, a scientific article, but hands-on. So a lot of these are really actually based on a scientific article that we tried to reproduce in Galaxy. So we uh, walk students through, um, give them all the scientific background and tell them what to do in Galaxy to actually perform the analysis. So we have here the title at the top, a list of authors and anybody else who contributed to this tutorial in other ways. At the top of every tutorial, you will find this overview box, which has learning objectives, um, requirements, uh, a time estimation, um, things like this. So that's also uh, makes it easy for you as a teacher to, to help you to prepare. Uh, and we have supporting materials in the form of the, the data sets that are needed to perform this analysis. The workflows that um, do the entire analysis, so you can use these for testing, um, FAQs, and if someone has a reported version of the tutorial, they will also be linked from the top here. And then the tutorial itself, yeah, we tried to give all the scientific background, then we have these hands-on boxes where students have to really go and do something in Galaxy, so they are instructed which tools to run, which settings, and everything. And we also have uh, these question boxes for formative assessments so that you can check uh, if they really understood the, the main points. Uh, the answers are also provided. Um, and then um, once we run through the entire analysis, um, we have also citations, all the references, but also how to cite the tutorial itself uh, so people can cite you uh, or the framework itself. Um, and every contributor also gets their own page on the Hall of Fame, we call it, where you can really list everything you've worked on. So that's not just invisible work. You can really um, show people this page to show uh, all your contributions. So every tutorial, slide deck, anything you've uh, contributed to um, shows up there. And of course, uh, anybody using the materials can also provide feedback. So we have a small feedback form embedded at the end of every tutorial. Um, and users uh, fill this in a lot. And this really helps us to improve materials. Um, the uh, anonymous responses are also um, made available from the GTN. So if you do provide a, uh, a tutorial here, you can also see what people uh, Think about it sometimes we get really good suggestions from from learners here but oh i would like uh more information about this or i would like to include this step and that really um helps us to keep everything uh, up to date so i just wanted to zoom in a little bit more into these uh supporting materials so um you have all the uh, data sets necessary for the tutorial the workflow so that you can run the whole thing in, with one click in galaxy and these FAQs, so every tutorial has a set of FAQs um, associated with it, uh, just with common questions that other uh, people who've taught this have noticed they get a lot during this uh, tutorial. So then you can really uh, use that to prepare, uh, for example, like a common reasons why tools might fail at that step. Um, yeah, and the recordings I will talk about more later too. So all the input data sets that are required for the tutorial, um, like Gareth said, we use also Zenodo to host those. And they are automatically uploaded to the shared data library section in Galaxy. So at the top, you have shared data. Um, there is a GTN folder. And in that, uh, you have here the same list of topics as you see on the tutorial page. So uh, any students can really um, just find their data there, import it into their own analysis history. Their analysis environment. So even if you have a bad Wi-Fi connection, you don't need to spend a lot of time um, uploading this data. Uh, and you can just get started right away. Uh, one nice feature that we recently added is automated video slides. So uh, in this tutorial, um, you can provide the written um, tutorial like I went through before, but you can also have some slide decks associated with a tutorial to, um, to introduce the topic and the scientific background in the form of a slide deck. 
Um, so these can be reused by teachers, um, but if you provide good speaker notes on each slide, we also um, convert them automatically into uh, video slides using text-to-speech. So you will get also a video um, that you can, can share with users that also uh, speaks on every slide and explains more background. Uh, which is again also very useful for preparing to teach the slide deck yourself even if you don't intend to use a video version of it but you can see the words that other presenters have used to um to present that slide uh, so even if it's maybe not your um your area of expertise you can still uh, present the slide and if you add a slide deck with speaker notes, you get this video uh, for free. So it's also very nice. Um, you don't have to worry about creating that video. It's all done behind the scenes as soon as you add it to our repository. Um, another really nice feature we've added recently are learning pathways. So this really is, and we have all these tutorials, um, but of course, if you're teaching a, a week-long course, for instance, you want sort of a nice story between the different tutorials that really take you from, okay, uh, introduction to Galaxy Platform maybe, maybe some uh, background, really step-by-step -step building up knowledge around a topic. And that's what these learning pathways are for. So now you can define a set of uh, tutorials from the GTN around a topic. Um, for example, for a training course uh, from, yeah, from different topics. Um, so we just started that and we uh, really invite people to add learning pathways. So for example, if you've taught a course with Galaxy or if you're teaching a course with Galaxy, just look at your program. That's basically a learning pathway. And that is also very useful for to share with the rest of the community because others might be looking to uh, teach something similar. Um, so yeah. So when you click on one of the pathways, um, this is what you see. So you can really even have some information around this. You can have, okay, this is day one or module one, and this is uh, what we go through. So two short um, tutorials to introduce people to Galaxy if they have never used it before. Then here you would move on to the basics of genome uh, sequence analysis, quality control and that thing. So here you can really pick and choose uh, tutorials that form a nice story together. Um, yeah, some other uh, fun new features um, that we've added. One is uh, choose your own adventure. Um, so this is an example where inside the tutorial, um, users are presented with a choice. So in this case, they can uh, choose between feature counts or star uh, for uh, counting of genes. Uh, and depending on what they choose, the content of the rest of the tutorial changes. Um, so you can also use this to have sort of a beginner tutorial and an advanced tutorial, for example, um, or maybe uh, use a different organism, uh, maybe the um, tutorial exists for humans, but you're, uh, uh, you're teaching a plant genomicist, uh, and then you can just change the, the data that you're using. So this also gives, like, again, more um, ability to, to really cater the tutorials to your, to your audience. Um, some integrations with Galaxy that are very nice. Um, so Galaxy has this um, hat icon at the top bar. Uh, if you click on that, um, the Galaxy training materials are open. They're overlaid over Galaxy so that you can really easily switch between like the instructions of uh, what to do next and, and doing Galaxy. So if you click outside this window again, you can configure the tool. You can open it again uh, to check if you got all the parameters right. Uh, so this really makes it uh, yeah, easy to use for, for students and nice to present. Um, and especially for small screens, this is very um, useful. So we call this tutorial mode. And the one other really cool thing that we can do in this mode, if you open the uh, training network tutorials like this, um, these hands-on boxes, um, you can now, the, the names of each tool that needs to be run is now clickable. So if you click on this tool, it will autom automatically um, load that tool in the Galaxy Center pane for you. So you don't have to manually find the tool in the long list of tools. Um, it'll just open it for you. And the same thing with workflows. You can just click one button. It'll load it into Galaxy, import it into Galaxy for you, load it in, then the students just have to click one button. So we're really working on tight integration between the tutorials and Galaxy itself. Okay, so that is uh, 
the GTN itself, the materials we offer, uh, and the integrations with Galaxy. Um, but depending on uh, what you do, you also need a certain amount of compute power behind it. So if you use tools like STAR, you really need a large amount of RAM, for example. Um, and a Galaxy also offers a way to uh, um, guarantee that um, your course will run smoothly, no matter how many uh, how much resources you need. And uh, normally also in Galaxy, if a lot of people um, use it at the same time, you are put in a queue. So if it's very busy, let's say on a Friday and everybody's starting their, their analysis to run over the weekend, you might have to wait half an hour, hour before your jo big job starts, uh, which is normally fine. But when you're teaching, you don't want this. You can't have an hour of dead time. So that's why we developed a training infrastructure as a service. Um, so. Without this, it was usually when you're just teaching bioinformatics, it's hard to find these compute resources. You have to um, find, um, set up the environment to run your training, make sure there's enough resources, you have to test it, you probably have to find someone who uh, can work with an HPC cluster, for example. Uh, and you as a teacher, you don't want to really worry about this, you just want to focus on, uh, on your, your scientific topic, on your course. Uh, but if you use TS, training infrastructure as a service, this sort of um, gets taken off your hands. Um, so it's free, first of all. Uh, you get dedicated resources on a Galaxy server to run your event. Uh, so, and you don't have to do anything else. Um, so how it works is you, um, you request it and you get your students get put in a dedicated um, group that gets priority. So it'll make sure that um, there are reserved resources for you to run the jobs you need for as many people as uh, you need. Uh, and if Galaxy get busy, gets busy, your workshop will not notice and will not have to wait in the queue with everybody else. Again, the solid screen. It's available on the big three Galaxy servers, Australia, Europe, and US. Um, and here, for example, there is a, is a request form. Uh, I think if you just go to, yeah, usegalaxy.org.au for the Australian one slash TS, and that's where you find the request form. So you can request it today completely for free. So just have to provide a little bit of information about your uh, course. So when is it running? How many people do you expect to attend? And of course, what are you running? So if you're using GTN tutorials, you just get the name of those and the administrators form know which tools are in those and uh, how much research they need and they use that to uh, decide how much to reserve for you so you as an educator you request that and that's it you're done basically uh, then it gets hand up, handed off to the galaxy administrators so they will uh, look at your request they will evaluate how many nodes you need on the apc cluster for example how much memory how many people are attending based on how many people are attending and which uh, tutorials you're, you're giving. And then once they've got that set up and they've approved it, they you will receive a link like this. Um, it's the, the, the Galaxy um, URL slash join training slash some identifier for your, um, for your course. And that um, uh, link you will give to the to your learners to your participants and uh, they click on it once at the start of their course so whether it's like one day or a week or six months it doesn't matter they click on this once and they will be put in this group and from then on the um, the jobs they run will be run in this priority queue um, yeah and the rest all happens behind the scenes automatically and one other nice thing you get as an educator is a, a dashboard. And so um, this is really uh, particularly great when you're doing remote training. So you can have here sort of an uh, aggregated view of how the students are doing. So you can see um, which tools have been run or are running. You can see uh, here whether they uh, completed successfully or maybe have an error. So this is, makes it really easy to spot like, okay, Lots of people are having problems with step three. Maybe I need to go back 
explain that again or see what's going on and highlight um, maybe some common problems that might be going on. Um, so here you get like a, a nice little overview of how it's going, um, especially for remote training when you can't uh, look at people's screens and walk around the room. This has been very nice. And uh, TS has been used a lot recently. So we uh, just published a paper a few weeks ago about this, if you want more background information, but it's already been around for several years. Uh, it has been used uh, for over 500 training events uh, over the three big uh, Galaxy servers in 143 different countries, and it has supported over 24,000 learners. Um, so it's really a nice, um, a nice research for teachers um, to make that um, easier to get um, all the infrastructure they need for that. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about is also uh, remote training using Galaxy, using the uh, training network materials. Um, so during the pandemic, um, we started doing uh, yearly online training events uh, that ran for five days, 24 seven across the world. Um, of course, we can't find one time that everybody can, can, uh, can attend. So we did this asynchronously. So we made, we recorded video tutorials of people teaching uh, the materials, which students could then uh, access and use to learn in a self-paced way. So they would just uh, wake up, um, and whenever it's convenient to them, they would start the videos. Um, and then they would have 24 hour uh, support on Slack because we have so many instructors across the globe um, that there was always um, a good number of um, people available on Slack to help out uh, these people. Uh, and this was completely uh, free uh, and very popular. So we had, um, this was our last one. It happened in May. We had over 3,000 registrations from across the globe. Um, every year, these events get bigger, but we have over 24 uh, different modules, different um, scientific topics uh, or technical topics, um, over 190 uh, video tutorials and 116 hours in total of videos. Um, and again, the community effort. So there are uh, 79 speakers and 92 contributors. So also lots of people have hung out, making sure all these videos have good captions uh, or just helping out answering questions on Slack. Uh, so in total, we had over 140 instructors on Slack who help out when they can during the day. So there's always some people available to, for help. Uh, and last year, we also expanded our offerings like Bioconductor joined this year to have Bioconductor tutorials, so our coding tutorials inside Galaxy. Um, join here, same for RO crits. So this is a way to make your, um, your workflows fair and share them and publish them. Um, so this is really a growing thing that is, uh, yeah, very nice community um, event again and very popular. Um, and also a great way to introduce people to Galaxy. So we see that the overwhelming majority of people who joined, um, this was their first Galaxy training. So it's a really great way to onboard new people. Uh, and most people, almost everybody would recommend this to others. So this is really nice to see for us. Um, and this is just something like this reach is something we cannot do with in-person events. Um, so we had, um, Lots of people also from low and middle income uh, countries who also told us like they, they're never able to attend these meetings uh, or these kinds of trainings in person because it involves travel, but they just don't have. Uh, and of course, also no, no carbon emissions. So this is a really nice um, training we did. And we see here, these are, these are the YouTube views we have. You see that like these spikes really correspond to the, the training weeks. So really we get a lot of people watching our videos and learning from them. And so I think this is uh, the total um, amount of views we get people. And of course this all stays online after the event too. So all these videos uh, that we make for these events, they are also linked to from the main GTN page. So you can always go back uh, and rewatch these videos. So people can keep learning from them and you can also use them for teaching. 
So um, either to prepare yourself to just have a look at how other people have taught this topic, or you can just uh, tell your students to, to look at the video and, and do it. Or if you have sort of a like background tutorial, you want everybody to be on the same page before you teach them. So use this as you want, but it's all offered for free and you're free to use this however you want. Um, and uh, as part of that video library, also we offer a course builder. So if you want to organize your own course around these videos, we can, uh, there's a builder that you can use um, or you can just contact us and we, um, you can pick and choose which videos and tutorials you would like to include in your, um, in your training. Uh, and you will get a web page that um, has the entire program, um, links to all the videos, all the resources people would need. So like really a one page course handbook, uh, again, without having go, to go through the trouble of setting up your own website. Um, so yeah, please contact us if this is uh, something that sounds interesting to you. So especially for remote trainings, a uh, very nice resource as well. Uh, I would like to end now on sort of a few words about support you can get uh, from the community as, as an educator using the Galaxy and the Galaxy training materials or how you might be able to contribute back and become part of this community. <clears throat> um, so all of this, all these uh, tutorials are all uh, collaboratively maintained by a GitHub. Uh, the tutorials themselves are markdown based, so we try to keep this as simple as possible to develop, so you don't have to be a web developer or anything to get these nice tutorials on the website. Um, the easiest way to contribute is to, if you have a Galaxy workflow that runs through the entire uh, lesson you want to do, we have this online tool where you provide this workflow and it'll automatically make the entire uh, skeleton for the tutorial. And basically all you have to put in then is like some of the scientific background. You can focus on that, but all these boxes that tell the user like uh, which tool to click and what parameters to use, that is all already generated for you. Um, so if you do have some tutorials that you would like to add, um, please do. Um, we are uh, more than happy to help you to add these to the, the GTN if it's uh, if you've not used it before. Uh, please contact us. Please um, do that. We have uh, lots of tutorials also in uh, the GTN about how to add tutorials, uh, how to develop these things, um, and you can ask for help. Um, if you would like to record a video tutorial, that would also be, for example, very helpful. Um, so you just pick any tutorial, whether it already has a recording or not, it doesn't matter because these uh, change all the time. Galaxy changes all the time. So we're really looking for uh, updated uh, videos all the time. Uh, and basically you just record yourself on Zoom or something, uh, teaching this tutorial, uh, walking through it, performing all the steps in Galaxy yourself. Um, and then it will automatically be included in the next smorgasbord event we run, so this big global galaxy event. And again, there are um, instructions for how to do this, um, if this is something that's interesting for you, and again, you can contact us as well. Oh, or if you have taught a course with Galaxy, we'd be very happy to uh, have a learning pathway based on this event, so yeah. You Whenever you do a, a, a training event, you're already creating a learning pathway. So if this uses a lot of GTN materials, you can just add it to our page of learning pathways. Um, easy to point your uh, students to and nice to share with other people who might want to teach. Um, and yeah, there's really a big community around here and everybody's very helpful and welcoming. And um, yeah, you can just join Matrix Chat. That's where you will find most people. So I put a link in here in these slides, which will be shared with you. Um, we also, um, we had for a long time, we had quarterly collaboration fest. So this was to help anybody who might want to add um, our own, their own tutorials to help you to do that. Really a day of just working on this with us around to help. Uh, we've paused them temporarily just because we were a bit busy, but we hope to resume these uh, after the summer. Um, and also there are train the trainer, the 
answering that entire topic about uh, train the trainer in uh, the GTN. So how we recommend you engage with these tutorials, uh, how to teach, how to prepare for teaching, uh, their checklists, things like that, anything that might be useful for you as a teacher to use um, this whole ecosystem. Um, yeah, and the link to our papers again, if you would like to read more about this. Um, and yeah, one last time, I would like to uh, stress this. This project is really a community effort. It's not possible without like hundreds of people who work both on Galaxy and on the uh, training materials. And it's really, uh, really a community effort. And with that, I would like to thank everybody for attending and happy to answer questions um, if you may have them. Thanks so much, Gareth and Saskia. That was a wonderful overview of all the different lovely modularized features that help people teach using Galaxy. We do have time for questions now. Uh, while you're thinking of your questions and writing them into the Q&A box, Nigel Ward, the Australian Biocommons Associate Director for Platforms, wanted to give a shout out to NCI for generously providing the dedicated cloud resources that underpin the Galaxy Australia TS service as well. Okay, so turning to questions, the first question that we have is how can how can you register to be a Galaxy tutor? And this was asked when you were talking about the smorgasbord in particular. Um, so you don't even have to register if you would like to um, help out with um, the Galaxy smorgasbord. Um, I could add a link to the um, to the slides, but basically you reach out to us on Matrix um, and say, hey, I want to help with this and we'll help you get started. So I think that's the, the, the nicest way to do that. So all the, the support there happens on Slack um, and I can put that link in there too, but just reach out on Matrix and we'll help you. And yay for wanting to help out, that'd be great. Yes, the more the merrier, certainly. Um, what are the plans? Do you have plans for 2024 Smorgasbord just yet? Um, I, I really hope that we can do it. It's always a lot of effort, um, but I think uh, the plan is to, to run it again, to keep running this. Every that, would be, that would be wonderful. It's been very exciting to watch over the last couple of years. Uh, just to re-emphasize as well, you, you can just go and use the Galaxy Training Network materials without telling anybody. They're free there for you to take and use as you wish. Uh, so there isn't a formal registration process unless you want to pair that with the computational services provided through TS, then you will need to apply for that. And the next question uh, is, is it possible to run R Studio and Jupyter on Galaxy? I know a lot of people use these in training as well, so they'll be interested in integrating the two services, I suppose. Yes, you can use both of those uh, in Galaxy. So those are what are called interactive tools, but they work pretty much like normal tools. So you can search for Studio in the in the tool list and, and launch it, and then you get this uh, interactive R Studio environment. Same with Jupyter for for Python. And we even have an entire topic, uh, data science topic, that uh, just has R lessons, Python lessons, even Bash um, SQL lessons. So really a whole topic that really doesn't have much to do with Galaxy, but you can still use Galaxy and these interactive tools to, to teach this. So you can use Galaxy to teach um, uh, command line, to teach uh, programming, and even to teach things like Snake. We even have a uh, tutorial on that. So, yeah, it's a really nice resource to, to teach both. Great, thank you. Uh, kind of a related question there is, how can you see the Unix equal of the tools when they run? Um, so when you run a tool in Galaxy, um, in the history, you will get uh, the outputs of all these tools. Uh, and mainly you can see just the content they, they uh, provided, but you can also, there's like this information icon to get more information about the, the job run itself. And this includes the, um, the command line that was run behind the scenes. So from this, you can also um, find the equivalent in Unix that it was translated to. Um,
Gareth, did you have anything you wanted to add there? Thanks, Melissa. No, I think that's covered it. Uh, our studio is currently turned on on Galaxy Australia um, and available. <clears throat> I'm just checking on the current availability of the Jupyter Notebook, which is not currently available on Galaxy Australia, so but will be shortly. Um, otherwise, no, I think the question's all been answered wonderfully. Can we show that? I'm assuming we are talking about the Linux or Unix command. And yes, I was just bringing that up in the background. I just have to lean in a bit, sorry. So as my screen loads, you'll see my active Galaxy window coming up. Yes, on we can. Right, on the right hand side, thank you, Melissa, of the screen is the history and Ed, just a random history item. Saskia was uh, highlighting the I or information button associated with, with the history item. Let's see, if, there we go. It's just a little bit bigger there. Uh, this will bring up the data set information. There's a lot in here. Apologies, a little bit of what's in here will be because I have admin privileges on this machine, but uh, the, to answer the question specifically, we're talking about this job information session section and the command line associated with running of this particular tool. So this is actually what is being sent from the Galaxy web server to the destination resource stipulates everything about running that tool. The syntax of that tool language is applicable to writing that yourself uh, at command line. Obviously the path and folder destinations are specific to Galaxy, but this can be very handy uh, in troubleshooting your own bash scripts or your own command line to, to look at the syntax for uh, variables, inputs, outputs. So I hope that uh, effectively explains that in a bit of detail. Yes, thank you, Gareth. Uh, and the question as well, more on the availability of tools is, is IGV available in Galaxy Australia for visualizing uh, genomes? So uh, IGV, um, unfortunately, is a little bit hard to run directly in Galaxy. There are some links that if you have IGV uh, installed on your local computer, it'll automatically launch this with um, the data configured and maybe a reference genome. Uh, we do have JBrowse as a um, Galaxy tool that is like a very good alternative to IGV. It has all the same functions, just looks a little bit different. And I know people are working on getting the uh, IGV.js or the web version of IGV into Galaxy as an interactive tool. Um, so keep your eyes peeled in the next months um, for that. Is there a GTN tutorial on that that they could look at to learn how to switch between Galaxy and IGV? Um, there is. So um, we, we have a dedicated tutorial for JBrowse, first of all, that also includes how to do it in IGV. And there are some um, tutorials that use it as a component. So it's not a dedicated tutorial about IGV, but as part of, say, the assembly tutorial, the final step might be visualizes in IGV. Um, so there is a search bar at the GTN at the top that you can type IGB in and uh, find tutorials that use IGB in there. So that will be a good step to, to identify some IGB tutorials. That's an excellent tip. I did not know about that search bar. And there is now quite an extensive library there in the GTN, which is fantastic, but that'll make it much easier and quicker to find exactly what you're looking for. Okay, I think we will leave it there for today. As we leave, I have a couple more housekeeping things to run through, if you will bear with me for a moment. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is part of a series of webinars. The next one is going to be on getting started with RNA-seq and taking your RNA-seqs from raw reads and transforming them into biological insights. That is on the 6th of September, and the information about that webinar is up on the Biocommons website. Uh, you can also keep up to date with what's happening in terms of events by following us on Twitter or subscribing to our newsletter. 
Finally, I'd like to acknowledge that the Australian BioCommons is enabled by funding from NCRIS via BioPlatforms Australia. And last but not least, thank you once again to Gareth and Saskia and Helena, who unfortunately couldn't join us today, for taking the time to share their insights and knowledge about how Galaxy can be used for training. And thank you to all of you for joining us today as well. We hope that you enjoyed the webinar and we hope to see you again soon. Until then, goodbye for now and enjoy the rest of your day.